I don't know how long it was. Twenty thousand. Okay. The choice is theirs. Okay, um, I see that we have quorum for this policy and priorities meeting of November 21st. I uh, hereby call it to order. After looking at, oh, first call to order and declare declaration of quorum. After, does any council member have a conflict of interest with the agenda on tonight? Not yet. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we did that. Sorry, I would have. Spiked. So, adoption of agenda. Uh, after looking at the agenda, agenda, does any council member have any changes to make? Yes, Councilor Gurley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Looking at the time and also the fact that yes. uh, two parties have been waiting patiently, I move that we bring item 5.5 and 6.1 up forward to be dealt with first and uh, hold the other items later. We're close to curfew, so we want to get that done. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Uh, any other amendments? No. No? Oh. He's already dealt with it, thank oh. you. Okay, sure. very good. Um, on, the on the amended agenda, um, all those in favor? Okay, and on the agenda itself? Okay. As amended. Oh, as, as amended. amended. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, disclosure, we've already done that. New business. Okay, here we go. It has been moved. Right. Do 5.5 first. 5.5. Yes, we have a 5.5. There we go. Okay, it's been moved by Councillor Papp that the active transportation master plan, that policy and by priorities committee receive the report active transportation master plan and that committee recommend that council approve the active transportation master plan and implementation strategy discussion yes mr. thank Mayor. you very much mr chair <coughs> just wanted to uh, highlight to council why is it here and not at council our procedure bylaw allows for presentations at council and not at committee uh, and also being a substantive report, we weren't sure as we we looked at the agenda whether council would want or committee members would want to get into the the detail and committees the the time to do that. Um, in, in terms of the report, I mean, I asked a lot of my questions, Mr. Chair, already. Um, aside from the 153 kilometers, I had a question about that, uh, and I don't know if the if the uh, earlier presenter could could assist us with that mr. chair if you'll allow that the report talks about in the next 20 years that it's 153 kilometers if you add everything in yes um, so just using a, a street as an example if we do Hay Street and both sidewalks on both sides of the road plus the the sharrows on both sides of the road is that and it's a two kilometer stretch is that two kilometers or is that four kilometers or is that because they're two way, you know. Uh, how do you, how do you get the 153 kilometers <laughs> in that case? A two kilometer stretch with sharrows and sidewalks. Yes. Perhaps the presenter, please. Thank you very much. Clarify. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is uh, not duplicating the kilometers. So if it's a two kilometer stretch, it is two kilometers of infrastructure proposed. Okay. Now, if it's a <coughs> sidewalk. Yes, it would be. In okay, that case, it was. It's a sidewalk and a bike lane. Yes. Uh, then it would be two kilometers of sidewalk and two kilometers of bike lane. So pedestrian and cycling facilities, unless they're a multi-use facility, are considered separately. So that would be four kilometers okay. of active okay. transportation. Okay. But it isn't uh, four kilometers of bike lanes. It's just two kilometers okay. of bike lanes. That's helpful. Because I got a little disheartened, Mr. Chair, because I think we've put in 14 kilometers of sidewalks since we signed the walking charter in 2008. And so... It, you know, 153 is a bit daunting, but if you kind of double it up a little bit like that, it's uh, it's not as daunting. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chair. Just um, just a, a comment and maybe a question. Uh, I think it's a very comprehensive report. Uh, it uh, certainly 
will provide us with an active transportation um, uh, what's their facility, second to none, I would say. Um, but by the same token, I'm a little bit concerned of full adoption of it, um, only in that I don't want us to be tied budgetarily to it. In a, and even though the, the document says it's non-prescriptive, I'm I just want to put it out there that it is non-prescriptive and that it's not going to tie us down budgetarily going forward. As, as we all know, we have some challenges over the next three to five years in terms of budget. Uh, and we've made our decision on where our priorities lie. Uh, but having said that, where we're undertaking um, street rec uh, change or reconstruction or in the new East Vaughan Hill lands where we are mm -hmm. building new roads, mm -hmm. then incorporating yeah. many of the elements there. I think we already are committed to that, right. but this documents that. But apart from that, I think we'll have some financial challenges. So I, I just want to get some clarity around that. It, it, if my understanding of that is correct, that it's not prescriptive, you understand that there are budgetary restrictions and that uh, <clears throat> adoption of this does not necessarily commit us to X, Y, Z within the next five-year uh, timeline. Thank you. Absolutely happy to answer that as well, <coughs> Mr. Chair. That is absolutely the case. What we've given you is a network and a guide that gives you the foundation should you wish to pursue the ultimate implementation of that whole network, but that same token also gives you the availability to revisit it on an annual basis to make sure it fits with your own capital budgets and with your budgets that you have. Definitely acknowledges different opportunities for uh, partnerships as well as funding from external sources and notes that you need those additional investments to <coughs> achieve what we're looking for. We started, as I mentioned in the earlier conversation, with that capital budget that you already have and those projects as the foundation and feel very strongly that if you just move forward with those projects, you will have a very strong network of active transportation facilities. And if you are able to, on top of that, uh, find additional monies to pursue other projects, that's, that's just excellent, but knowing that there are limitations. Uh, I myself, as well as my colleagues who've worked on this, uh, we've completed over about 100 active transportation plans for all sizes and scales of municipalities, knowing that budgets and internal processes and internal structures are all very different. So hopefully this document gives you that ultimate vision, but the flexibility within it to be able to meet whatever is appropriate for your municipality. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councillor Cruz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. One last uh, question or point. Um, I would be much happier if the Highway 20 <coughs> piece was not in there. I, I just think that that we're open our, opening ourselves up to huge liability issues uh, unless the region were to come on board and significantly separate those uh, bike lanes and, and pedestrian ways from the high rate of traffic and the high speed of traffic. I think we've got some serious issues and I would feel much happier if that was piece was not in there and there was an alternative um, east-west route you know, most uh, uh, identified as the more significant route rather than the Highway 20 route because I don't see that being corrected in the short term. time when we started this project was at the beginning of the point where the region was starting their transportation master plan. And what we'd hoped was through that process we'd be able to put something on 20 and say, you know, the region needs to do something more separated and mm -hmm. it's a great connection that cyclists are currently using not what we would recommend them to use, but they are currently using them. So we were hoping that through that process we may be able to we would have been able to influence a connection that the region would identify and then partner with yourselves to improve. That doesn't look to be the case based on the way the region is going uh, and looking at their network and their preliminary concept for their active transportation strategy. That's not the direction they're going in. 
but we did also include a number of alternative connections um, that provide those parallels. So if we were to end up having to remove it, and we've had those conversations with the committee as well as others, uh, we're still quite confident <coughs> that there are those alternatives that are in place. So we absolutely hear you on that one, and it is likely going to be one that will, will not be pursued in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Just if, if I might, and I see Councillor Ribiak, yes. but I just want to build on what Councillor Kersey has said, and I appreciate the latitude, quick latitude from colleagues. Um, first, I think by adopting this, it will <coughs> allow us to uh, apply for different funding that's available. We know that uh, the province is putting together various packages, et cetera, for cycling and, and, and walking and active transportation. So we can point to this plan and say we need some funding for this because it's in our plan that we've approved. And then the second piece in terms of, of Regional Road 20, um, you know, the, the, I didn't see the overt reference, I think, necessarily to this, but it's there. It talks about the East Vaughan Hill piece, but we are putting that 3.6 meter uh, walking cycling path between essentially sort of the, the, the Sobeys and Rice Road. Um, and as new developments come in on the south side, I'm hopeful that we can include those in as uh, part of what's required for, for, you know, things to occur there. So there are different ways to skin the cat, and I think if by leaving it in the plan, it would be important that we could point to it and say that that's something that we want to, uh, want the region to, to discuss, um, especially since the master plan hasn't come to council yet. So uh, they haven't asked for specific feedback on separated uh, although we've said that in other jurors other areas we want to separate the the uh, cycling and walking from the road network so I, I'd encourage that it's that it's there as a placeholder so that we can continue to have that conversation thank you mr. chair and thank you colleagues thank you mr. chair um, I'm, I'm mindful of the time as well so I'm, I'm, I'm cautious about how long an answer I, I would get. Uh, I, I share Councillor Kersey's uh, concern about uh, the plan leading to uh, additional costs as a result of, of um, I guess, the application of these principles and values to the, the projects that we have. So I'm just wondering whether through you we might ask um, staff, either the CAO or perhaps <coughs> the Director of Public Works, how this document would be used when looking at and designing and therefore costing any particular project a road for example I think of of, of an item uh, that caught my eye the uh, putting a paved shoulder onto Foss Road which which strikes me as being a massive massive undertaking um, so so very, very quickly perhaps maybe we can hear how, how this document will be used <laughs> practically uh, in in the work of staff uh, to the director of public works through you mr. chair um, from the capital planning point of view, uh, we like the strength in that it has a lot of the costing piece done for the recommended infrastructure over a, a long term. Um, so we have already kind of dipped into it and had a look to see uh, for when we aligned the 20 year um, with the, the help of the consultant, we, we brought the 20 year capital plan into the master plan knowing that it's going to need some some flexibility but said then if a road for example is up say Foss Road force main work being done by the region in that resurfacing we would consult this document and say is Foss Road flagged for any other infrastructure improvements at the same time so it's a quick reference for us to be checking if it's part of a planned uh, network improvement with already some preliminary costing included. Um, so it's kind of a, a pick list that way. What longer, or I guess throughout more of the processes that Public Works does, um, we were hoping to see this perhaps fold into a how might we team, an interdepartmental team, to take this and not just make it a capital infrastructure thing, but um, all the recommendations about uh, links into planning and processes and promotion which touches so many other groups, um, departments within the town, not just. <coughs> the Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, so I, I, I'm hearing in that 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 there are ways of using the money that would have been spent on the road anyway better because it's informed by this plan. 
if I may continue the question. So, so, and, and I can see that as being a really valid way of, of, of using the document. In the event that there are additional costs contemplated as a result of the application of this plan, or if there are specific objectives that arise out of this plan that are, are within it, are we going to know about those um, separately, or is that just going to be folded into the into the into the general number? Three, Mr. Chair. Even in this draft capital budget, we had put a new line item in there as a potential placeholder. I'm not sure where it'll flush out after we've been through everything. But even to add a line item every year that talks about active transportation initiatives, whatever that initiative might be, that's kind of fed from the overall plan, the, um, the master plan at the end. So yes, about uh, planned capital work, we can use it as a reference point to see whether um, additional funds could be incorporated into the budget to cover uh, a recommended active transportation element that maybe wouldn't have would have been overlooked otherwise or in addition there might be independent recommendations for years that it makes sense when there's room in the capital budget to adopt something perhaps a little more aggressive with strictly an active <coughs> transportation initiative does that answer your question we're kind of trying to do both thank you Th thank you mr okay. chair and through you thank you thank you director Anyone else? If I may just say something, number one, uh, uh, I didn't say anything uh, when we were discussing it before. I, must, I just want to say that I, the, the thoroughness of this report uh, blows me away. I don't know how many hours you guys put in this thing, but it sure uh, uh, was an excellent uh, presentation. And, and, I, and I honestly think that a lot of those, those 10 recommendations, uh, if you do them by themselves, yes, they probably will be costly, but if we can get them involved in capital projects right from the get-go, all of a sudden uh, what might cost a lot of bucks, uh, maybe it isn't going to take that much to uh, go that extra four feet. Uh, what have you it definitely uh, and if nothing else we, we've got that list to look at and uh, and, and use that as a uh, going forward thank you we, oh, Council Dearly? thank you just building on that I think the direction we've been going has been that anyway and uh, I think <laughs> this document will just enhance not only our thinking but uh, uh, by employing some of this we will be enhancing the quality of life in this town like I say, this is the direction we have been going. We wanted to, to do some of these initiatives. This thing is going to be a great tool to use in, in accomplishing those goals. So, you know, it's, it really makes a lot of sense, and it's a great report. It's, like you say, it's uh, very thorough and comprehensive. That's good stuff. Thank you. Are we ready, ready for the question? Okay, that Policy and Priorities Committee received the report after transportation master plan and that committee recommend that council approve the active transportation master plan and implementation strategy all those in favor all those against motion carries very good Congratulations. <laughs> uh, a motion put forward by councillor <coughs> That policy and priorities committee receive this report for information and that the uh, property owners of 1155 and 1307 Rice Road receive a copy of this report for their information. And this, of course, is the uh, request to redesignate. Uh, discussion on this? Yes, Mr. Mayor? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just to to start it off and, and maybe ask a question of, of our director. Um, thank you very much for the comprehensive report. Um, outlining, I'll say, the hurdles that are uh, required for this individuals and the, these <laughs> property owners to, to do what they've, what they've wanted. But it seems to me that the major hurdle is um, this whole whether it's good general agriculture in the region's plan or whether it's um, rural designation in the region's plan. And if, and if it was that designation in the region's plan, then we could kind of entertain some of these options. So just looking for clarity uh, for that from the director. Mr. Chair, through you, yes, certainly the regional plan is the 
uh, the hurdle to overcome. Our official plan needs to be compliant with the regional official plan. And uh, these lands on um, uh, the side of um, Rice Road are designated good general agricultural. They're considered to be class three soils. That makes them part of the grouping of prime agricultural lands and um, their reason for having the good general agricultural designation. If um, the region were to change their land use designation to rural, um, then certainly it's much easier for the town's official plan to be amended to a rural land use designation. Um, but in order to amend the regional official plan, that is also going to require um, some significant work, um, study to determine um, you know, the agricultural <coughs> impact of the proposed land use change. Uh, as well as some more detailed and probably refined soils analysis um, with respect to what those lands are classified <coughs> as. Uh, based on the available mapping that we have, um, that we were able to research, it does identify the lands as class three soils. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, it, it's, it, it's not in the green belt, so it, it is agricultural and, and I think these properties are sort of the first start of the non-green belted area. Is that correct? Um, Mr. Chair, through you, that's correct. These lands are not in the green belt plan. Um, so uh, in theory, that's a little bit better than if they were in the green belt plan. Um, but they do still fall under that uh, terminology of prime agricultural land. And under the provincial policy statement, prime agricultural land is to be protected um, for agricultural use. Mm -hmm. I, I, the reference uh, to the to the individual's letter that's here talks about, uh, Mr. Chair, talks about a meeting with some, <coughs> some planners at the region and they referred to these properties as a as a white belt, the small properties highlighted in which the maps were kind of left out on their own, etc. I, it, it, I don't know if there's there's any comment on that. I mean, I, I believe we've had a meeting with the region with this. It does seem to be an odd sort of area for where everything is. Um, so is it only based on soils that one can make that determination or is it is rural agricultural or? Mr. Chair, through no. you, um, certainly there's a variety of aspects that are um, take into consideration for determining um, certainly the agricultural capability of lands. Uh, climate is a big consideration, particularly in those specialty agricultural lands such as the grape and tender fruit lands, uh, in addition to your soil quality. Uh, slope uh, is another uh, consideration that uh, people look at. Uh, in this particular area, you'd also probably want to, you know, do a very in-depth analysis in terms of the surrounding land uses, the size of these agricultural parcels, their ability to functionally support and be viable for agriculture, um, the amount of um, perhaps natural heritage lands that are impacted on these lands, if there's something nearby uh, in terms of woodlands um, that provide, you know, habitat to a certain species that, you know, eat an agricultural product. So there's all sorts of things that all in all that once you do the analysis, you, you could potentially say that this is an area that might have some consideration for changing it. Um, but in the absence of that kind of detailed work, um, you know, that, that would be the, the type of uh, research that would be required that the region would be looking at to support a plan amendment and to justify that these are not prime agricultural lands. Okay. Uh, the, two other quick questions, Mr. Chair, and I'll, I'll put them both together. Um, this, this area is serviced, um, but these property owners aren't looking for urban designation. They're looking for rural designation. So they're not, like it's not trying to expand the urban boundary. It's just sort of, as I understand it, designating it to the actual area that they that it is, it's rural. It's not great agriculture. I think that 
you know, there's an allusion to that in the uh, in the letter. Can we just hear about that, Mr. Chair? Um, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, through you, these lands are outside of the urban area boundary. Uh, Rice Road at this location does form the boundary. Um, so they are right at that urban rural interface or urban agricultural interface. Um, one side of the road is uh, urban and is fully serviced and um, this side of the road is not, although they may have water services to them. They do, yeah. Um, the, they are not looking for uh, connection to the, the um, to the any additional services. That's my understanding. I can certainly appreciate, um, you know, the uh, property owner's, you know, plight here. <laughs> um, it is, you know, probably not ideal for them. Uh, essentially, what they would have if they're not agricultural are two large rural the state lots, uh, each being about 10 acres in, in area. Um, and to change that, then what is the impact on, <coughs> you know, surrounding agricultural areas as you go further back? Um, that would be something that the region would be looking at. What I can say is um, in my discussions with the regional staff on this matter, they did indicate that they certainly met with one of the um, letter writers and they've had some discussions with them. Um, they fully acknowledge that there is pressure in this area um, and but they're also not in a position at this time where they're looking at their agricultural land base they're currently in the process of doing a municipal comprehensive review as it relates to their urban lands and not their lands outside of the urban area boundary um, they will. The region is, however, proposing to initiate a complete review of their regional policy plan or regional official plan, um, likely to commence next year. Uh, and it might be through that process we could have some success in getting these lands redesignated. I'm not sure about that, but it would be an avenue to, to try. Uh, but that's a lengthy process as well, and you're looking at probably four to five years to um, to get a, a new regional official plan in place. So, <coughs> as my report indicated, these are not easy things <coughs> to undertake, um, and I certainly do feel for the um, you know the frustration that the letter writers feel in terms of the lack of movement on this, this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, prime agricultural land to me supports good crops. I, I think the the only thing I've seen there in the years that I've lived in this town is at best has been some cash crops and, and weeds. Uh, now, if that being that people aren't actively farming it, but the in talking to uh, some folks who have land there, uh, they tried to plant fruit trees and, and they just didn't last and there's uh, some real challenges there so the misnomer of prime agricultural land perhaps is th the roadblock that is separating here now the region apparently is saying uh, the municipality has to initiate things and then the municipality is saying the region has to uh, initiate things so uh, you know I, I think can we get our heads together with the region? And I know that you have indicated you have already spoken to them, but certainly there seems to be a failure to communicate, like they used to say. So, uh, you know, I would like to, uh, on the side of the, of the letter writers, some of the facts that are brought up are things that I feel are not being understood or are not being considered when the whole situation is looked at. Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, um, certainly we have uh, had some conversations. We fully can appreciate where the letter writers are coming from. Uh, but normally these types of uh, requests are actually formal applications for amendment and we have not received that. Um, and you know anybody who wants to make a change to their land use designation there is a process through the Planning Act um, and that is available to do that and that's an actual application to amend your official plan. And under the legislative requirements, we are obligated to conform to the regional official plan. And so in terms of process, 
amending the regional official plan is actually what needs to happen first. And I think the region, uh, in my conversations with them, certainly did acknowledge that they feel and can appreciate where the letter writers are, are coming from. It's just in the absence of an application, their hands are tied as well in terms of how to deal with this. And so that's, you know, part of the issue as, as well. Just, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. So the, the process would be uh, actually an appeal to amend the official plan regionally, first of all, uh, costly measure, timely measure. Can we get some indication as to what would be involved in that? Yes, Mr. <coughs> Chair. Uh, amending the official plan is very costly and does take time. Um, the regional application fees alone are over $16,000. Um, the application fees for the town are around $5,800. Um, the official plan is a very, you know, it's a document with some strength and amending it is not to be taken lightly. And um, it just, as, as was indicated, you know, the, these are, quite a lengthy process. Um, they're somewhat onerous, and we appreciate that. Um, and I, you know, we have um, have the, the process available to us uh, in terms of that, but that's, that's you know, the, the process that we have to work under in terms of uh, amending documents. Um, the applications could be processed concurrently together at the same time, um, but the regional plan would have to be amended and approved by regional council first before town council can amend and, and change its official plan. That's all, that's all for now. Thank you. Anyone else? Excuse me. <clears throat> Anyone else? Just um, if I may, Mr. Chair. Um, yes. It's um, rather unfortunate because uh, I understand the staff's position on it, but I think in light of what we have as far as knowledge from what's going on with the properties, is it worth that shot? And what you're laying out here is an extensive process, a costly process, mm -hmm. which may or may not work, right? That's correct, and, and uh, Mr. Chair, through you, it is, it is expensive, <laughs> and I don't take that lightly at a, by right. any means. Right. And, um, you know, the regional official plan and our town official plan both indicate that non-farm uh, uses are not allowed unless they're contemplated through uh, an official plan amendment at both levels. Um, those are the current policies, and so to ask for us to stray from that policy, you're only opening yourself up for an appeal um, by either the region and or the province. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chair, um, I guess the, the region is, just for information, the region is uh, considering spending $3 million over the next four or five years to update the official plan. We heard from the director that that's going to include agricultural um, <coughs> properties. It's going to start with, with urban areas. Conceivably, the region will be doing some study of soils and, and all of that as it looks at the agricultural viability of the region across the entire region. So I think at, at minimum, this council has heard from some residents that are concerned that this is the wrong designation for these lands. And I think, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with this council saying to the region, we've received some concerns from residents about the designation of these lands, and we would ask the region to consider um, these lands as rural instead of good general agricultural and and that would form its way into the policy planning at the regional level as it as it looks at it I think that's being honest that's what we've heard and and <coughs> it starts with the region um, I don't think it 
unless I'm wrong, and the director can correct me, I don't think it goes against any policy or anything like that. In fact, the region looks to area municipalities to say, what are those areas that um, are important to residents, property owners, et cetera, because we're the ones that actually talk to people a lot more than they do at the region sometimes. So we hear from residents more. They're our neighbors. They're our, you know, acquaintances. They, they, they come here to town hall. So um, I, I'd like to hear from colleagues, but I'd like to move perhaps a, an amendment to say we receive the report and that we go on, um, go on record <coughs> and say we ask the region to consider these lands as rural instead of good general agricultural. And, and kind of dip an oar in the water and and move in that direction. Any councillors on the amendment? Councillor Durden? It's through you, uh, Mr. Chair. Would that mean forwarding the whole report as well to the to the region? If the director thinks it's helpful, uh, we could do that. We could certainly forward the correspondence, sort of a precursor to say we've received this correspondence from some <laughs> residents. They're concerned that they're properly designated we'd ask the region to consider we could put the report as well yes, yes mr. chair through you uh, certainly forwarding the report to the region doesn't do any harm uh, including the correspondence also doesn't do any harm and um, rightly so as the mayor indicated the region as part of their preparing a new official plan will be doing an agricultural land base and agricultural system review mm -hmm. and it is through that process <coughs> that we would hope that we could get the region to reconsider and and say that these lands here are really more appropriately to be designated rural um, and that would be part of the background studies that the region would have to do to update their official plan Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Related to that, I certainly would support the mayor's uh, suggestion. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, just very quickly, it seems to me that we went through an exercise like this earlier with regard to the designation of, <coughs> of Ridgeville as a hamlet. We, we introduced that concept into the normal course of business of the various agencies and institutions that look at that sort of thing, and I think that that would be very effective. Uh, I, I'm not sure that I could be supportive of uh, the, the town subsidizing the effort to change no. the official plans, no. uh, but certainly our involvement in, in this direction in the normal course of business of, of no. the region, I think I would be very supportive of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you uh, to our director of planning. Um, the properties that run along the east side of Rice Road, uh, the buffer between Thorold and, and Pelham are outside the urban boundaries as well. Are they also falling under the um, good general agricultural uh, <coughs> uh, designation or have they already been designated as rural? Um, along the east side of Rice Road? Sorry. Yeah. Isn't it right? So He's that's where these side. lands are Pardon? located. Um, a portion of the lands from Highway 20 to just past Port Robinson Road are in uh, the Greenbelt Plan and our prime oh. agricultural, like our prime agricultural lands. These are as well. And then from just south of Port Robinson Road, further up to the Welland boundary, they're good general agricultural. I see. Okay. Okay. So we should be requesting that whole street. Yeah, I think it's these th that's that strip in that area. That whole that's entire area. Yeah, but I I think, Mr. Chair, just to that, I think this this caps these two letters capsulate those those properties that are outside that? of the green belt. Is that? Mr. Chair, through you, both of these properties are not in the green belt er uh, plan area. So, um, you know, there is the ability for the region to look at uh, changing the land use designation. Yeah. Okay, then let's do that. Thank you. Point of order, Mr. Chair. We're reaching uh, curfew time. We need a motion to extend. Well, it's 10 Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we need a motion to extend 10 minutes, maybe 15 oh, minutes. Oh. Peter, well, can, well, we'll oh, I'm to, sorry. Just, no, you oh. gotta, you gotta There's a the motion, it. but we'll have to go back to Council to complete the Council agenda. So I don't know. You'll have to either go until matters have been completed. 
that if that would be you want to defer that? Darren, is well, that important? We're going to defer it. It's already already I can't get it. Okay. Oh, my yeah. Okay. So. Until all matters have been concluded. Until then on until this, this matter is until concluded. This concluded. Okay. 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 Well, so the motion is that the rules of procedure as contained in the town of Pelham procedure bylaw be suspended, and that the specified meeting curfew time of 10 p.m. be and his hereby waived, and that the remainder of business listed um, for this meeting continue to be considered until. Oh, All matters have been concluded. No. No. Till this, no. till this matter has been this, decided. Oh, until this matter. I'm sorry. Until this matter has been decided. Yeah. Uh, uh, all those in favor? What? Oh wait. wait. What? I mean, what about the investment policy? We're, we're taking money in that's going to be sitting there. We need to have a, that policy dealt with. I think that's important. We're getting our. Also afforded all the council. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, you could put it on the next council okay. agenda. So for all the council. other items to council, council. council. Go directly to council for the rest then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we st we're staying with the uh, until this matter is settled. Uh, no. Yeah. Pardon me? You need a mover. Oh, uh, so Mr. Mover? Chair, oh, I'm I'll yep. move it as yeah. long as it also includes that the remaining matters get forwarded to, to the next council meeting. Yeah, right. I'll support that. A seconder yeah. on that? Do uh, council a second. Okay. Uh, do we have to set a time on that, or we just, just go until finish. we're done? Going to finish. This okay. Up. Okay. So uh, moved by uh, Ms. by uh, Mr. Mayor and seconded by if, Peter Pat. If you sign on. Oh, okay. Thank you. So we're back to discussing. All in favor. So we're now discussing the amendment. Yes. Yep. To yep. this matter. Yeah. To this matter. Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion on the amendment? Yes. Councilor. I'd like to make a suggestion that we remove the wording of that alternative that says council can give direction to staff to initiate at our expense. I think that shouldn't be in the what we're forwarding to the region because they may say you guys have oh, to do yeah. it. So what we want to do is put the ball <laughs> in the region's court. No, not a chance. We'll redact it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, put a big black line through it. Big black line. Like the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The report not included that alternative. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Does everyone agree on that? Yeah. Okay. So, Madam Clerk, is that what we're going to do? Okay. So that's a through you, Mr. Chair. That's a staff direction to remove the wording from the staff report. The alternatives. Yes. The alternative um, detailing above, the costs above the being undertaken by the town. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would you like it? Would you entertain a vote on that staff direction, please? Okay. So now we need to have vote on the staff direction. No, All those staff directions. Don't want us to do that. Oh, okay. Staff oh, wants to do that. We don't have. So. Thank you. See you okay. <coughs> so yeah, then it's on And then you need a vote on your amendment. Okay. So on the amendment proposed by uh, Mayor Dave. All those in favor? That we go on record. That's right. Okay. Excellent. And Good. then on. Um, so now I have I'm to vote on the main motion. Yeah. And now as on the main amended. motion, as, that, amended. as amended, that Policy and Priorities Committee receive this report for information and that the property owners of 1155 and 1307 Rice Road receive a copy of this report for their information. All those and, in favor? And with the amendment that we also ask it to the region, right? That we ask the region to, to consider the region. these lands as rural and set right. up good general right. Right. As long as that's in there, we'll vote for it. I'll vote for it anyways. Yeah. Um, Madam Clerk, is that in the uh, motion? Yes, I have received the amendment and the vote on that, so it's the motion as amended. Okay, motion as amended. All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay. As amended. Yeah. And now we're done. Wow. How does this count for meeting? Let this regular meeting of Policy and Priorities Committee be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for December 5th at 2016. Mr. Chair, just to that motion, I wanted to uh, thank you very much for serving as Deputy Mayor for the last eight months. And uh, the rotation uh, does continue. Um, thank you for chairing the uh, PNP meetings and uh, serving as Deputy Mayor. And I believe it's Councillor King that uh, will now serve as the Deputy Mayor.
Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chair. And before I uh, end the meeting, I would just like to say that I uh, appreciated this uh, opportunity. Uh, definitely uh, a little different sitting here than often the other chairs. <laughs> and uh, my only regret is I never had the opportunity to throw Councillor Papp out on his ear. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Exercise what that opportunity that? at this point. Well, he, he, he <laughs> 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 Oh, All right, Marvin, I'll let you have the right now. Okay. Can you keep them in camera? Or do you want it back? No, I'll take them back, please. <laughs> what does council want to do with the in camera? <laughs> I thought that was important. Give it back to George. Well, it's, it's, it's important. It's not a good project. No? Well, it is. We've got to get things signed. Well, it is.